Hey everyone, I'm Trevor and today we're at Disneyland to take you on a full tour of Disneyland. Along the way, we will share secrets about every land that you didn't know. So let's get going. And we are gonna start right here on the other side of the park entrance with the entrance to the Disneyland Railroad Station on Main Street, USA. If we turn to our left, we see great moments with Mr. Lincoln over there. And if we turn to our right, we see the Disneyland City Hall. Now it's under construction and scrim. You'll find that that happens throughout Disneyland at different times of the year because they constantly are updating things. The ding you just heard is the horse-drawn carriage, horse-drawn trolley, and uh, you can ride that. There's a lot of Main Street vehicles that you can enjoy. Here's another one of them right here that uh, you can ride up and down Main Street. To our left is the Emporium, one of the main gift shops here at Disneyland. In fact, all of Main Street is pretty filled with gift shops on either side. You'll have to check them out for yourself. We've got Pluto doing a meet and greet here. This is a very popular meet and greet area for characters right here in Main Street USA. You often find Minnie and Mickey over there, as well as Chippendale and Goofy. He does meet and greets here as well. So uh, uh, probably Donald and Daisy at different times. Now these gas lamps that you see, they are real gas lamps from cities all across the United States. The Disney company purchased these, a majority of these anyway, as scrap metal for just a dollar a pound. Actually, this one, you can see it's lit. You see the flame in that? So it is a real working gas lamp. Perhaps one of the neatest features about these gas lamps is that some of them are over a hundred years old from the late 19th century and they progress through time as you walk down Main Street, starting out as gas, and then when you reach the end, they are electric. Now, a lot of people think that Main Street USA was a recreation of Walt's hometown, Marceline, Missouri, and that's actually not the case. Yes, that was the idea that inspired Walt to add this part of the park, but the person who created it was Imagineer Harper Goff, and he was from Fort Collins, Colorado, and his inspiration for Main Street USA actually came from his hometown when he returned and took some pictures and showed it to Walt and Walt was so ecstatic that they moved forward with kind of like a hybrid. You can see some influences of Marceline, but it is also Fort Collins, Colorado. You know, I feel like most people know about this, but the windows along Main Street will often say things or have names in them and those names are usually special. I don't know who Jim Cora is, but you better believe that that is not put up there just randomly. Jim Cora would have been a person integral towards Disneyland's creation. Well, I just looked him up. Jim Cora actually joined Disneyland in 1957 as an attractions host, but retired 43 years later as the chairman of Disney International. Right across the street from there is Carnation Cafe, which is one of the table service restaurants here at Disneyland. And next to that is Gibson Girl Ice Cream Parlor. These buildings are actually not to scale. Uh, the top floor is shorter than the second floor, and they use a feature called forced perspective to make the buildings look normal to you. Now, I'm pretty sure that the upper floors are not used for anything here at Disneyland. At Walt Disney World, they do actually use them for offices. And yes, they are short, small, and crazy cramped, but uh, I'm pretty sure they just use them for storage here if they even use them for that. Uh, coming up here on our left, Refreshment Corner here is another quick service location at Disneyland that primarily sells hot dogs, and there, there's so much to see here in the hub, so what we're going to do is we're just going to walk forward, then I'm going to loop around the whole hub before we actually turn and go off one of the spokes into the different lands of Disneyland. Now immediately to our left is going to be the Jolly Holiday Bakery Cafe. Of course it is named after Mary Poppins, it's a Jolly Holiday with Mary. Jolly Holiday Bakery Cafe, they even have a penguin on top from Mary Poppins. Really great place to eat. The entrance to Adventureland is gonna be over here off to our left, followed by the entrance to Frontierland over there. You can see the Matterhorn peeking through the trees up there. To our right, that green little cart is a uh, turkey leg cart where you can purchase turkey legs. And then the colorful tents to our left, which is to the left of the castle, is the Royal Theater, where they have a Tangled and Beauty and the Beast show every single day, multiple times a day. There's also something down here that I want you to see, so we're going to pop down here real quick. And that is one of my favorite snack locations at Disneyland. And it's gonna be Maurice's Treats, which is this little cart to our right. And we're gonna pop it out to wide angle at the moment as we pass by. You can see Maurice's Treats here. And this is just a, a cute little fantasy themed area, fantasy land. It's sort of a fantasy land adjacent area. 
and straight ahead is the Royal Hall. Right here on this sign, it tells you that Ariel is receiving visitors, but oftentimes uh, they won't tell you who else you will see. So you might see more than just Ariel, and it says it's a 45 minute wait, so that's what that line is for. Here's, uh, looks like Anna is doing a meet and greet over here on the outside. So if we head out this way, uh, there is a back entrance to Fantasyland here. You see the sign that says Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique off to the left. We're not gonna go that way. Instead, we're gonna come out the main entrance um, in front of the castle where almost everybody gets their photos taken. Everybody's taking photos. They have photo pass members here to take your photos as well. And uh, we wanna come out this way. Once again, we are just doing a loop around the hub before we go down any of these spokes. This pathway will take you towards Tomorrowland and Fantasyland and the Matterhorn, of course. Straight ahead there is Pixie Hollow where you can meet Tinkerbell. And that is in between the Matterhorn and Tomorrowland area. Big construction wall up here for Astro Orbiter. This will reopen on March 8th. Check out my construction update for more information on rides that are closed and when they will be reopening. I do that every single month. We're headed back towards Main Street now. Straight ahead's the Plaza Inn. Character breakfast in the morning and quick service lunch and dinner. So anybody can come here for quick service for lunch or dinner, but uh, it does require a reservation for the character breakfast. There's a few things over off to the left. They're tucked around the corner and I don't want you to miss them. And the first thing is going to be the Little Red Wagon. It sells corn dogs here around the corner. This does have mobile order, even though it's a little cart, it does have mobile order. And then back behind there are two things. First off, first aid in that building straight ahead and the Disneyland Baby Care Center right here. First aid is great because, you know, if your feet are hurting you or you need some medicine or you forgot some ibuprofen, you can go there, get Tylenol, get ibuprofen, get that sort of thing, bandages, all for free. Uh, Baby Care Center is also great if you have children because they have changing tables in there, they've got diapers, uh, they've got microwaves so that you can, you know, warm up formula and that sort of thing. So if you have babies, uh, be aware that the Baby Care Center here and at DCA are both vital. We use them all the time when we had when our kids were little. Now we are going to start over here at Adventureland, but before we do Adventureland, uh, there's a secret about Adventureland that I want to show you. We have to walk down here to Frontierland first. If you come up here to Frontierland and you look into the land, you can actually see all the way toward the, toward the back of the land. And if the boat were at dock, you would be able to see the boat uh, right about there because it would be docked and it would be visible and it would have this feature that is drawing you into the land. And this is something called the Disney weenie. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny term, a weenie. But they most of these lands have long viewpoints that end an iconic feature to like make you interested in coming into the land. However, if we come over here to Adventureland, now it might be kind of hard to see because there's so many people here today. It's very crowded. It's a Saturday, by the way. It is 81 degrees and sunny. Uh, very strange temperature, but Saturday the 27th. And uh, uh, if you notice that Adventureland does not have the weenie, you're looking straight into a wall. There's no iconic feature drawing you in. And the purpose of that is it's actually intentional. Uh, Walt Disney designed it that way because Adventureland is supposed to be a land of adventure and discovery. And so you're supposed to come into the land and explore and discover what it has. You're not supposed to be able to see everything up front. And uh, the Enchanted Tiki Room, Dis Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room, in fact, that's what it's called, is, is that building straight ahead. Walt Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room was the first attraction around the world to use audio animatronics. How about that? Isn't that amazing? Welcome to a tropical hideaway, you lucky people, you. And next to that is the Tropical Hideaway. This is a somewhat newer location, snack location here at uh, Disneyland. And this was added a couple of years ago to replace the Aladdin meet and greet area. And they have this mosaic on the ground outside of the snack location. It's the only last remaining remnants. It's like a little memorial uh, honor to that Aladdin meet and greet that used to be here. Now, if we turn and take a look at uh, Jungle Cruise straight ahead, there's something else I want you to see. And we're gonna try to block out try to block out the sun. Do you see that palm tree right there that's sticking above the trees that is poking out? That is the Dominguez tree. The whole property that Disneyland is built on was the Dominguez farm. And when Walt Disney purchased it 
from him to build Disneyland on it, they had one request as a family, and that was that they do not demolish the tree. And we'll zoom in here on the tree. Uh, because that tree was a gift to his grandfather that was planted in 1896 and uh, it was the last remnants of the Dominguez farm. Now as you look around this land you will not be able to find any food carts here. There's no churro carts, there's no popcorn stands, no place selling turkey legs and that is because well one it's just a very congested and tight area as you can tell um, and it used to be worse actually. They've, they've done a whole lot to making this area wider and more accessible uh, but the main reason was that Walt Disney did not want the smells like the churros and the turkey legs to ruin the atmosphere, the, the jungle atmosphere of Adventureland and so none of that is here. Then we come to the entrance of Jungle Cruise and I feel like of course everybody probably knows this but maybe some of you don't that Jungle Cruise was always intended to be real live animals not audio animatronic animals and Walt just couldn't figure out how to get the logistics to work and so it never you know it never happened and, and we have the existing version of Jungle Cruise as it is today. However Michael Eisner and Joe Rohde made this dream of Walt Disney's a reality when they created Animal Kingdom. So Animal Kingdom is the living embodiment of Walt's dream to have live animals on his attractions. To our right is Bengal Barbecue, which of course does have meats that probably smell, although honestly I've never really smelled anything coming from this building while we're talking about those food carts and things. And then immediately opposite Bengal Barbecue is going to be Indiana Jones Adventure. And there's something down here that I want you to see that's a fun little fact that you know maybe you'd be interested in and that is that this vehicle to the right here this is an actual vehicle that was used in the filming of Raiders of the Lost Ark and it is owned by George Lucas but it is here on display in Disneyland for you to see so this is a an actual live movie prop from Raiders of the Lost Ark. There are entirely too many people here for the off season, by the way. Like way, way too many people here. Probably because of the weather, because of how warm it is. Last week it was not like this, but wow, is it crazy busy today. Here we have the Adventureland Treehouse. So it's Swiss Family Robinson themed again. Oh, hello, Red. Hello there. Hi. Um, wow, distracted. Okay, <laughs> Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse. Uh, Swiss Family Treehouse is what they have in Walt Disney World. We have the Adventureland Treehouse, but uh, they are sister treehouses with very similar themes. And that replaced the Tarzan's Treehouse uh, relatively recently. Straight ahead is Pirates of the Caribbean, but we're actually going to walk down this way towards the entrance of the attraction because there's something that I want to point out to you. Right across the rivers of America, we have Tom Sawyer Island straight ahead. Uh, you can take the, the rafts over there. They'll take you across the island. There's not a whole lot over there. I mean, there's some fun stuff for kids to go and do and explore. But aside from that, it's just, you know, some tunnels and some stairs and uh, fun things to look at for kids. But uh, definitely go check it out if you want to. Oh, coming this way, you'll see the uh, Davy Crockett's Explorer Canoes. They are paddling their way towards us, one of the attractions here at Disneyland. So the entrance to Pirates of the Caribbean is right there. If we wander back this way a little bit, there is a special secret that I didn't even know about till recently. We're gonna have to see if we can see it. Not this angle, we gotta keep walking. Okay, there's the entrance to Pirates of the Caribbean from where we are standing. You see what's up there above the, the, the buildings? I'm gonna zoom in. We have a ship mast. Yes, there's a ship mast up there. That's to, um, well, it'll look in an airplane too. Uh, there's a whole story behind that. I don't know the whole story. I'm not going to get into it. But uh, the ship mast, of course, is to blend in with the Pirates of the Caribbean theme. And they originally used that as lighting for Fantasmic. However, uh, they don't need that anymore. So now it's just decoration that you would have to be very hard pressed to notice. But from right where we're standing, we can see it. I apologize for the glare. There's nothing I can do about it unless I keep my hand over the lens the whole time. And then you'll see parts of my finger poking in <laughs> as we're going around the tour. Maybe that's better than the glare, I don't know. But um, to the left is the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction line, but straight ahead in that pink building, which is above the Pirates of the Caribbean, is 21 Royal. And uh, 21 Royal is a very fancy dining place that costs $15,000 for 12 people. You have to do 12 people. I mean, I guess you could go with less maybe, but then you'd be paying 15,000 anyway. So it's uh, cheaper if you split it between 12 people. Again, that's here at uh, 21 Royal, right next to the Royal Street Veranda, 
And that is this little nook right here, Royal Street Veranda. You can get some bread bowls at that location. There is a Haunted Mansion gift shop, Haunted Mansion dedicated gift shop. We're gonna go to the wide angle lens again, uh, over off to our left. To our right is Cafe Orleans, sit down table restaurant here. And this big crowd that's coming is the exit to Pirates of the Caribbean. So this is where everybody comes out of. Next door to that is Blue Bayou, one of the most coveted dining reservations at Disneyland. I'm not a big fan of the food personally, but the atmosphere is top notch. The green building straight ahead is a Tiana themed gift shop. Now back down this corridor is the entrance to Club 33. And it's uh, pretty nondescript, but here it is. This is the door. Uh, you wouldn't think of it to, to see the door, but we do know that it is because it's got the Club 33 uh, icon, little logo there, and a little doorbell. And this is a, a secret exclusive club that uh, you basically have to be invited to get into. Club 33 costs $25,000 up front and $10,000 a year thereafter. You can apply, but you ultimately have to be invited by Disney in order to join Club 33. They're very exclusive club and program. Here is the Mint Julep Bar. We still can access that. Uh, the Disneyland Railroad is still in operation while Haunted Mansion is closed. More on that in just a little bit. But the station, the New Orleans Square station is closed, which means nobody actually gets off of the train here. They just stop because, well, they can't move forward and they have to uh, refuel up on water and things like that. That's, that's their fuel. It's a steam engine. In fact, somebody just came out of Club 33. And this building to our right now is the, actually the entrance to Cafe Orleans. We've just done a little circle around the building where that restaurant is housed. Here it is, Cafe Orleans. Immediately opposite that on our left is the entrance to Tiana's Palace, the newest restaurant at Disneyland that opened in September of 2023. This replaced French Market and uh, it has pretty good food. I like the house gumbo, it's my favorite item on the menu. All the construction walls to our left are what it's gonna look like for the next couple of months. Most likely Haunted Mansion closed for major refurbishment. Just expect when you come that these construction walls will most likely be here. I think that, you know, the rumors is that they'll open around August, but uh, I don't know that for 100% certain. You can see the Mark Twain Riverboat currently in dry dock over off to our right. Uh, that is going to reopen on February 10th, according to the refurbishment schedule. And then hopefully the scrim that's over there by the Harbor Galley will come down. And then that will be a lot more open and more beautiful area. Uh, the Harbor Galley though, is uh, one of the quick service locations here at Disneyland. Straight ahead is the construction for Tiana's Bayou Adventure. A lot of construction this way in Disneyland. I don't have a whole lot of secrets for, actually I don't have any secrets for Critter Country, which is the area that we are entering right now. And very few for New Orleans Square, which we just got out of. Uh, but straight ahead is the area for Davy Crockett's Explorer Canoe. You're like, what? I don't see anything. That's because it is down on the other side of the fence. And there's not a whole lot of people that ever really go to it. So they're always trying to recruit people. That's usually a very short wait down there at Davy Crockett's Explorer Canoes. Uh, I think it's great, personally. Straight ahead is Hungry Bear Restaurant, another quick service location here at Disneyland. Of course, there are a lot of them. To our right's a little churro stand. They also sell frozen lemonade. And to our right's Winnie the Pooh, many adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Another attraction that generally has a low wait time, even on the busiest of days, 15 minutes today. For as busy as you've seen the rest of the park, it has not been uh, too bad here. Ooh, ooh. Yep, this is another benefit of coming down here, is that we see Winnie the Pooh characters. And here comes Tigger. T-I double gut -er. That building straight ahead is Pooh Corner. We're not gonna go inside but it is very similar to Candy Palace. And they also have some other Winnie the Pooh merchandise. But I think I see Winnie the Pooh over here. And there he is. There's the Pooh Bear himself doing a meet and greet. But that's all we can do. Nothing else down here. We just have to turn back around and uh, go up to that fork in the road by Hungry Bear. So I'll catch back up with you there. And here we go, restaurant entrance. Now we're going to the right here. And we're going to go down to this path, which is gonna take us to my favorite land at Disneyland, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And it's a, a little bit of a long walk, so uh, might speed it up here. 
Over here off to our left is the lower seating area of Hungry Bear Restaurant. This place is huge. There's always a place to find a table there. And then straight ahead is a bridge that is going to lead us into Galaxy's Edge. The far left here is the queue for Rise of the Resistance. I don't see it. I mean, the whole thing isn't being used, but I don't know that I see anybody outside, which is amazing. If I don't see anybody outside, it means one of two things. It means it's broken, which I don't think it is because I do see people walking through the queue. Or it means that it is an incredibly low wait time, like 45 minutes at best. Ooh, 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 it says 120. It says 120? 120 and there's not a single person on the outside? How, how is that possible? It must have broken earlier today and it's the only reason why they would be hyper prioritizing the lightning lane that much and that there would be that long of a lightning lane out here. It, it, uh, that's a very good possibility. The ride does break all the time. Wow, 120 minutes with nobody outside on the standby line? Now, as we're walking the rest of the way in here, I do want to tell you a few things about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. This is actually the planet Batu, So it's not supposed to be Star Wars at all, really, if you will. This is supposed to be a very in-world, uh, in-character place. And in fact, all the cast members here will speak a, a Batu version of English. And what I mean by that is they'll use local terms. Instead of saying happy birthday when you're wearing a birthday pin, they'll say happy sun cycle instead. We're gonna come up very quickly here to the marketplace and there's something I wanna show you in there. Uh, the Dianoga will sometimes poke his head out of the water. And I once came here and I waited probably like 20 minutes and he never popped up. And I just ended up asking the cast member, hey, is it broken today? And he told me, oh, the Dianoga is in hibernation. <laughs> they have to stay in character. And it, it really makes the immersion here on Batu or Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, however you want to look at it, uh, is just top notch. In fact, I wonder if they're, if he's coming out because I hear some noises and I see some people looking. So we're gonna go see if we can see the Dianoga. Uh, oh, yep, yep, he's out. You see him? There he is, oh, he's going back under the water back into the water. Well, we caught the tail end of it. And as I said, this is the marketplace on Batu, Black Spire Outpost to be precise. Black Spire Outpost is the largest settlement on Batu. And here is where you can do your shopping and find some food. Straight ahead is Ronto Roasters. We'll pass through that in just a moment before we take the stairs off to our right. In fact, we are gonna take the stairs right now we have Snips. Why, why do I blank on her name? Ahsoka. Ahsoka is walking straight in front of us. And there she is, Ahsoka, doing a meet and greet. Uh, it's the first time I've seen Ahsoka here at Disneyland. I know she's been here, but my first time. This is uh, Ronto Roasters, by the way. Right over there, off to the right. Kind of noisy, but they have really amazing Ronto wraps. Well, we're going to walk down here now, though, because... I want to show you a few fun things about Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. And one is that there is a little game that you can play here on the Play Disney Parks app with a magic band. And it's called Bounty Hunter. And that happens right here. You would tap your magic band on that little uh, circle, that little panel over there. You'll get a bounty. And it will play a uh, like warmer, colder, warmer, colder type game with your magic band pulsing green, pulsing red. If you're getting too far away, you know, hotter, hotter, colder, colder, that sort of thing. And then once you find what you're looking for and you do the steps in the app, you come back here to turn in your bounty and uh, this little window will open up and uh, you'll see one of the characters from Star Wars and, and he'll give you some credits for completing your bounty right here. But that's not the only secret here in this area. We have a Luke Skywalker's land speeder from episode four, A New Hope. Immediately opposite the land speeder are two paid experiences at Disneyland 
Straight ahead is Savvy's Workshop. That's where you can build a lightsaber. And it doesn't actually say Savvy's Workshop anywhere. It's very nondescript because, again, in world, this is supposed to be a hidden rebel base teaching uh, young Jedi how to create lightsabers, and they are hiding from the First Order. And it's actually part of the tale uh, of the experience whenever you do the experience. It's not just building a lightsaber. There is actually a story and an experience to it. Uh, I highly recommend that I did it, and I loved it. And uh, I'd, I'd do it again if it wasn't so expensive. It is cheaper here at Disneyland, though, at Walt Disney World. And then right over here is the Droid Depot. And I think that's supposed to say Droid Depot. You can kind of you can kind of make it out, I guess, if you look closely. Um, this is a paid experience where you can build your own droid. And uh, that is, you can build uh, one of these three droids. So you can make a choice and build it whatever color you like. As we come out of the Droid Depot, you will notice that on the ground, there are all sorts of little tire treads. And this little triple wheel one is actually R2-D2. And to make those impressions in the ground, they actually took the R2-D2 prop and drove it over the wet cement to get the impressions in the ground. So it was actually R2-D2, the actual droid that made those impressions. And you can see, you know, where R2-D2 uh, wheels off to. Now, from the entrance to Savvy's workshop there, we're going to look at uh, Docking Bay 7 is straight ahead there. And I want you to notice something about what's on top of Docking Bay 7. You'll see three cargo containers. And let's zoom in. One says 77. And if we move to the right here, you'll see that the other one that's visible says 83. Now the one that is not visible is 80, and it's dropping down into the Docking Bay 7 restaurant. 77, 80, and 83. Star Wars fans will immediately know what that is. And for the rest of you, that is the uh, release dates of the first three Star Wars movies, episode four, five, and six. And again, the seating area for that restaurant straight ahead. If we turn to our right, this building, this circular building, is Doc Ondar's Den of Antiquities. And again, the entrance to Docking Bay 7, over here off to our left. One of the best restaurants at Disneyland, Docking Bay 7, in my opinion. Anyway, it's one of my favorite places to eat. Not because I like Star Wars, just because I actually like the food there. The main attraction though, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, is gonna be the Millennium Falcon. This is a full scale recreation, replica, whatever you wanna call it, of the Millennium Falcon. Yes, full scale. That is the actual size built to the exact dimension and detail of the original Millennium Falcon from the movies. And so that is uh, really, really awesome. Of course, they have this in Walt Disney World too, but you know, I can just never, get enough of looking at this spot in particular, this land. It's really, really great. Uh, to get out of here, we are gonna just turn around from the Falcon and we're gonna go this way. To our left is Oga's Cantina, another one of the most coveted dining reservations at Disneyland. Very limited seating. Mostly standing room only. They do, though they do have some booths and tables in there, but very, very limited. They do have a walk-up list. It's mostly drinks, but they do have non-alcoholic drinks. And I've been in there a few times. Really nice place. Good atmosphere for the Star Wars fan. Uh, DJ Rex is actually the droid from Star Tours, the original Star Tours before the adventure continues, and he has been repurposed and moved to Oga's Cantina playing you, well, songs. He's DJ, DJ Rex. And uh, DJ Rex will play the classic Cantina song from A New Hope periodically. To our right is the milk stand where you can get some green or blue milk. And that'll, that path will actually take you back towards the front of the Droid Depot. But we wanna go down this way. Uh, there must be somebody down there because everybody's looking. Oh yeah, Kylo Ren. Kylo Ren and the Stormtroopers are down there and we're not going to go towards them we're going to continue this tour and this is one of three exits of star wars galaxy's edge we came in one of them we're going out one of them the only one that we did not show you 
is the Frontierland exit. Before we go to Fantasyland, we are going to detour and go to Frontierland, so we will show you that third entrance slash exit. You can see the back of Big Thunder Mountain Railroad here. And uh, like I said, we're gonna go to the right. If you go to the left, it's towards Fantasyland. And this is also another long path, so I think we're gonna speed it up. And here we are. So if we were to go to the right from this point, that is the third entrance to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. Now right around here, next to this waterfall and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad, there are a few character meet and greets that happen here. I've seen Pocahontas, Woody, and Jesse back in this area before. We're also entering one of the congestion points of Disneyland. So there might be some stops and starts. I apologize. Usually when you see stops and starts in the footage, it's me trying to avoid the crowds, trying to, you know, avoid putting a stranger's face front and center in my footage. I do try to mostly leave them, you know, kind of like off to the side. I don't want to be talking in their ear, so I'll stop um, if I'm like really too close to them while walking and, and all that sort of thing. I try to be courteous while I'm around here doing this. Sometimes it's, it's really hard when it's crowded very crowded on a day like today. Here's another one of those choke points. Now, um, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad over here off to our left, the entrance to it looks quite long. And then the entrance to the boats is gonna be over here off to our right. Uh, before we get there though, I do wanna point out Ship to Shore Market here off to the right, a place where you can get some turkey legs, chimichangas, corn on the cob, and uh, some other fruit. And then here it is, uh, the dock for the sailing ship Columbia, as well as the Mark Twain Riverboat. We've already pointed out that the Mark Twain Riverboat's in dry dock, but the sailing ship Columbia is operating today, taking people around the rivers of America. Uh, just a couple of secrets here in Frontierland that I'm aware of. I mean, I'm sure there are a whole lot more, and you can watch my Trapped in Frontierland video for like all the, the hidden Mickeys and any extra secrets that I'm leaving out of this video, but I'm mostly going off of my memory. I mean, I do have a few notes for myself uh, to not forget about some things, but otherwise, everything that I'm sharing with you are just the secrets that, that I know off the top of my head. And one of them is over here, this petrified tree. And uh, the petrified tree is from Pike Petrified Forest in Colorado. And uh, this was a gift from Walt Disney to his wife. He gave it to her for their 31st wedding anniversary. She, not knowing what to do with it, gave it to Disneyland and here it stands today. Over off to our left is Stage Door Cafe and dining area. We also failed to point out the Riverdale Terrace. It's over there, another one of the sit-down restaurants. So we've looked at all four of the sit-down restaurants at Disneyland now. Just to recap, they are Carnation Cafe, Cafe Orleans, Blue Bayou, and River Bell Terrace. So we turned around and now we're headed back up this direction. It looks like the Stage Door Cafe is actually a bit under construction. And right next to it is the Golden Horseshoe, which has saloon vibes. It's an indoor restaurant that sells uh, mostly chicken tenders and fish and chips and that sort of thing but I know a lot of people that really really love this place. There's a small churro cart off to our right as we pass by and straight ahead is a character location and Miguel is doing a meet and greet. I have seen uh, Mirabelle do meet and greets here as well but on the Disneyland app the last couple of days it's just been Miguel so I wonder if they've swapped. Um, Mirabelle's backdrop is over off to the left and then uh, Miguel's is on the right here. We want to continue walking this way. Over off to our left, we're not going to get much closer than this, is Rancho del Zocalo, a, another quick service restaurant, Disneyland, that sells Mexican food. If you would like to check out my food tour, I will link that at the end of this video for a closer look at all these restaurants that we've been passing. I'll also link my ride guide. So all the rides we're passing, if you want a closer look at those, uh, you can see them shoot an exposition to the left as well as Westward Ho Trading Company. Uh, Westward Ho is pin trading. And directly opposite of that is the largest store in Frontierland, Pioneer Mercantile. Now we're coming back out here to the hub. And we're hopping out of the hub in the Frontierland exit entrance, whatever you want to call it. And we're going to go up to Fantasyland now. Before we walk into Fantasyland though, I want to talk about a few secrets. Uh, first off is the castle. 
The castle is based and modeled off of Neuschwanstein Castle in Germany. And you can actually see that castle on Soren Around the World in the Germany section of the attraction. You'll notice that there. So uh, I almost walked past this one, but um, right here is the Disneyland 40th anniversary time castle. Not a capsule, a castle. And in this spot, and I'll just show you where it is, it is in front of the castle here. And this is to be opened on the 80th birthday, 80th anniversary of Disneyland, which is gonna be July 17th, 2035. They will open this up and there will be time capsule type items in there uh, from 1995. And the third item of note before we go through the castle, we're gonna get in there, I promise we are. This drawbridge is an actual functioning drawbridge, but it's only been lifted twice in Disneyland history. First on opening day, July 17th, 1955, and again in 1983 when this went under some remodeling. But it is an actual functioning drawbridge. All right, let's go now. We're gonna walk through the castle now, I promise. And here's Fantasyland. Now, before we get into the bulk of Fantasyland, we're gonna to turn to our left because I want you to notice something very special. And that is the Sleeping Beauty Castle walkthrough. You can go through here and climb through secret staircases to see dioramas inspired by Sleeping Beauty. There are staircases that go up into the castle You'll look at a whole bunch of dioramas and then you'll come back down the other side. It is wonderful and if you've never done it before, you absolutely need to. And then we have Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique to our left. And I can see Captain Hook straight ahead here. I did relocate a little bit here so that I can just stand. We have Peter Pan's Flight, the most uh, popular attraction in Fantasyland straight ahead. About a 40 minute wait at the moment. 25 minute wait for Snow White's Enchanted Wish over off to our right. And uh, we have to go around the carousel for the rest of the attraction. So we'll just do a big loop. First up is Pinocchio's Daring Journey. And I don't know how long that is, but it's probably five minutes tops. It's not that long of a line. Maybe it's 10, could be 10. Casey Jr. Circus Train to our right. Usually quite a crowded line for that attraction. Pretty slow moving. And if we were to go straight, we would actually end up back down towards Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, but we don't want to do that. We're just going to point over here at the moment and talk about Red Rose Tavern, the major quick service location in Fantasyland. They do have another one. It's kind of in the back of the park. We'll point it out when we get back there, but this is the primary one, kind of the only one for most people because of the other one is so out of the way. But uh, Red Rose Tavern sells burgers, flatbreads. Um, they have Mickey pancakes in the morning for breakfast. Now we have to do an about face and uh, head back this direction. But we have Dumbo to our left and up. Oh, that's not helping the congestion at all either. We've got, <laughs> we've got Jeannie up here. Jeannie doing a meet and greet. A lot of these characters, you won't find them on the app because they're uh, impromptu situations. They're just walking around. And uh, Jeannie is one of those that just walks around. You obviously saw Captain Hook earlier. And the one attraction we did not get to cover is Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. In fact, Hook is coming this way. And of course we have the King Arthur Carousel there going next to us on that direction. Well, this area cleared out significantly since we did that loop around the, around the carousel. I, I came back though because there's something I want to show you above Snow White's Enchanted Wish if we can wait long enough for it to happen. Oh, it's happening right now. Let's see if I can zoom in real quick. There's the Evil Queen, Grimhilda. You see her? The Evil Queen uh, peeks out from the window. I don't know when she's going to come back out. It's, it's frequent, but it's not like super duper frequent. And uh, again, that's over here at Snow White's Enchanted Wish. Oh, she peeked out again. See? It, uh, I guess it happens quite frequently because I, I haven't turned the camera off. We're gonna go up and down a Fantasyland a couple of times here because we actually wanna go out this way. It says this way to Tomorrowland. We're not going to Tomorrowland, but uh, what we wanna look at is out this way. 
and that is going to be Snow White's Grotto. So we have the wishing well here, toss a penny down, and um, I don't know what's supposed to happen. I've tried it a couple times, it hasn't worked. But there's supposed to be music or something, uh, noise, music probably, words, I don't know. And uh, this, I had to look this up because I, I didn't remember his name. Uh, this was created by sculptor Leonida Parma. And anyway, all of these statues of the Seven Dwarfs and Snow White are the same size, which created a bit of a problem because of course Snow White is not supposed to be dwarf sized. So John Hinch actually put Snow White up on top to make her appear larger. Once again, with that forced perspective that we mentioned with the uh, Main Street USA buildings. Now the wishing well, on the other hand, this was Walt's idea to discourage throwing coins in the castle moat. And he didn't want people throwing coins over here. So he put the wishing well so that they would throw their coins down here. And you can see uh, a lot of money in coins down there. And they will collect this occasionally and then they'll give it to charity. And a short jaunt away from the wishing well up here, we have a tree. And on that tree are some carved initials. We've got Peter Pan and Wendy Darling. How cool is that? And if there's the wishing well, you actually have to go up these stairs and it's that tree right over there. My voice is starting to get quite dry and raspy from this video. I think we pointed it out, but there's Dumbo again off to our left. It says a 25 minute wait currently. We've got the mad tea party over here off to the right under this tree and uh, Storybook Land canal boats to our left. Something that maybe you did not know is that all the old ticket booths from old Disneyland are actually still here. And right there is one of them. Doesn't look like it anymore, it just looks like a lighthouse, but that was where the ticket booth used to be. And there are several places like that uh, around here. Let's go show you another one. Oh look, it's Flynn, Flynn Rider. We're in business. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And Geppetto. Lots of characters out and about today, beautiful day. Well, here we have Alice in Wonderland and that toadstool right there, that used to be a ticket booth as well. And we zip back around, now headed up towards It's a Small World. Okay, some of the congestion passed, camera's back on. And we got Pinocchio straight ahead, where Geppetto is. Pinocchio is not far behind. Other characters I've seen up this way are Merida, and Ariel, Cinderella, and the Mad Hatter, Alice, Peter Pan, Wendy. I've seen a lot of characters along this general area. <laughs> it's fun getting to hear people's reactions to characters. Pinocchio! I'm a real boy! <laughs> I'm a real boy! There you go! You're gonna talk like that? That's more like Mickey Mouse! Uh huh? Yeah, I'm not very good at character impersonations. Anywho's, that's innateism. Anywho's. If you know, you know. If you don't, I'm not explaining it. It's a small world! It's a small world from the New York World's Fair. Uh, 1964 World's Fair? I think it was. The sign over here would say for certain. Uh, no, no, it just says 25 years, UNICEF, blah, 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 18, or 1989. If we wrap around this way, we're gonna go to Toontown. Now the Fantasyland Theater back here used to have Tale of the Lion King, no more. Do not have news on what is replacing it, but there's still something back here that I want you to see. Here we have Troubadour Tavern. Troubadour Tavern's the other quick service location in Fantasyland. As I said, Red Rose was the main one. This one's kind of out of the way. Still a tad bit of a line, but not very much seating. And it's tucked back here next to a theater that doesn't have any shows, but it's still open, selling you potatoes and some other things. Straight ahead is the third of four Disneyland Railroad stations. This is the Toontown Train Depot. Probably the one that I would recommend getting on the least because not very many people get off at Toontown, therefore it's harder to find an open seat. I feel like Main Street and New Orleans Square are the two best places to get on with New Orleans Square down. The second best place would move to Tomorrowland, which we'll cover in a little bit leaving Toontown to be my least recommended. I'm doing my best to keep the camera on at all times so that you can see as much of the park as possible, but it's a lot of walking 
and it's gonna be a long video. So if you're still watching right now, drop a comment down in the comments to let me know you're still watching as of Toontown. Still watching. Because, oh, if I had to guess, even edited, this is gonna be at the 45 minute to 50 minute mark if I had to guess. This video will probably be pushing an hour. It is going to be a long one. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, one of Disneyland's newest attractions, opened in January 2023, and the Greater Toontown area opened in March of 2023. And it is still just as busy back here. I'm sorry, I just had to turn the camera off. There's way too many people up here. I, I can't walk without getting in people's ways. So it's, um, it's becoming hard. I'm gonna try to walk on the way back out. And, and show you the way out of here anyway. Because when you walk to the end of it, the only way to get out is to walk back. So you'll see everything the other direction, hopefully. Here we have Chip and Dale's Gadget Coaster. Used to be Gadget's Go Coaster, but it's been rethemed. This is from Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers. And uh, that's a very long line for this very slow kitty coaster. Okay, so from Chip and Dale's, we're actually going to go to the right here and follow this sidewalk because first up is Mickey's house. This is the place where you can meet Mickey Mouse up here in Toontown. It does have about a 15 minute wait currently, but it's indoors, so that's really nice if it's a hot day. And then the pink house, you guessed it, that is Minnie Mouse's house where you can meet Minnie Mouse. She has a longer wait time at 30 minutes. And straight ahead is Goofy's How To Play Yard. A really great place for kids to go in and just explore, have some fun. They've got some slides, some interactive things inside Goofy's house that you should definitely check out if you have little kids. Uh, James is kind of outgrowing it at nine, but Benjamin is still a good age for that area and he's six years old. Over here to our left is Cafe Daisy the second newest food location at Disneyland. It sells mostly kids' food because it's in a kids' themed land, um, but they do have some adult items on the menu, and it specifically like says for adults or grown-ups or something like that. One final ride in this land that we have to point out, and this has been here a really long time. I mean, so has Gadgets, technically. It's just been renamed with a slightly refreshed and updated theme. We have Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin, and oh man, look at the line for our Roger Rabbit's. I couldn't even begin to guess what the weight is. It's kind of hard to see. It says 75. It, it, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to see. It says 75. Woo! That is, that is long. Now we have to leave the land. We have to go back the way we just came in. It's the only way out. I'm going to turn on the camera when we get on the other side. Woo! Okay, we're almost done. Hang with me here. Just a little bit left to go. I'm getting tired. I don't know if you're getting tired. You're getting tired watching me getting tired. This is a lot of walking. And if if you're ever curious as to how much walking I do at Disneyland, it's usually about 30,000 steps every time I come here. And uh, yeah, yeah, everything that you're seeing me do right now is just one loop around the park. This is technically, this is actually my third loop around the park today for different filming. So I do a lot of loops, a lot of loops of the park. I do get to ride rides and have some fun though. I've ridden three rides today, I think. I mean, it's not a lot, but I've ridden three rides. Let's go up this way, Matterhorn bobsleds, and finally talk about it. The world's first steel tubular roller coaster. So Walt Disney pioneered another invention. The world's first steel tubular roller coaster. The wait time currently is 60 minutes. That's a lot. Matterhorn Mountain is an old coaster. Definitely an old coaster. And it feels like it when you ride it too. It really does. It's not smooth. It's quite bumpy. I call it the backbreaker. There's actually quite a lot of facts about Matterhorn. Many of them you may know, but I'll just share all of them that I'm aware of. The first is, you used to be able to scale the Matterhorn. Uh, I think the last time they did that was in 2012, but they would have climbing expeditions where you could sign up and you could actually climb Matterhorn Mountain. About halfway up, they have a basketball court, which it, like serves as like a resting place for um, like workers and things. But they have a basketball court halfway up the mountain, inside of course. And then uh, another one of the things was that the Skyway, I think it was called the Tomorrowland Skyway, used to go through Matterhorn Mountain. 
but uh, that Skyway does not exist anymore. And so, uh, there's just a couple of facts uh, about the Matterhorn, some I'm sure that you're familiar with. Now we are finally entering Tomorrowland, the final land in our tour. We're coming in the back way, so it's not quite as picturesque as coming in the front way. Well, the front way is not as picturesque either, since Astro Orbiter is nothing but a construction wall at the moment. But Galactic Grill to our right, the one of the two quick service locations in Tomorrowland. Not necessarily my recommended one. Neither one of them are particularly great, but I like the other one better than this one. Some people would fight me on that. But to our left is Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage. Another ride quite a few people don't like. It's not my favorite either. Entrance to the Disneyland monorail over that way. And then we have Autopia next to that. So there it is, Autopia. From what we can see where we are anyway. And then back that way is the fourth and final Tomorrowland, uh, or rather Disneyland Railroad train station, the Tomorrowland station. That's where all these people are coming from. They're coming from the Disneyland Railroad. This building over here off to our left used to have the uh, Carousel of Progress long, long time ago. And then it was Innoventions, I think. And then it was the Star Wars Launch Bay. And it still says signs for Star Wars Launch Bay, but it's not actually being used as that anymore. It's uh, the top, the top portion is a lounge. I uh, star view station, yeah, it's a DVC lounge, uh, Disney Vacation Club member lounge. But anyway, that's over here off to our left. To the right, this building, uh, actually Astro Orbiter used to sit up there and uh, it got refurbished in 1988 and was moved to the front of the land because it was too heavy. Couldn't sit up there anymore after the refurbishment. Straight ahead is Space Mountain. Quite a few um, fun facts about Space Mountain for you. Before we get to that, let's talk about Alien Pizza Planet. That's the second quick service location. Their pizza, eh, not good. Their pasta, I think it's pretty decent. Large portions, easily splittable. I have a good time at Alien Pizza Planet. Now we're gonna stand over here off to the side. So a couple of fun facts about Space Mountain. First is it all downhill. Maybe you didn't know that that there's that lift hill at the very, very beginning and then the rest of the ride is all downhill and it uses gravity to keep you going. Uh, additionally, it feels faster than it actually is because they're blowing, there's fans blowing air on you the whole time. And so it gives you this sensation of, like I said, going faster than you actually are. And this giant granite ball that you see in Tomorrowland, it weighs 12,000 pounds and the water pressure underneath it to get it to move like that is so high that if that ball were removed, the water jets would shoot 150 feet into the air. Isn't that amazing? Tomorrowland is another congestion point, another pinch point for crowds. Walt Disney World's Tomorrowland did it right when they, well, Walt Disney World did everything right when they built that place because they built it so much larger. Of course, they had no idea it was going to be this popular one day, but a lot of congestion at a lot of places in the park here at Disneyland. And you just don't usually feel that at Walt Disney World because of all the extra spaces. Uh, so to the right, we have Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters. My kids love that ride. We went on it this morning. And Star Tours The Adventure Continues. My wife hates that ride, but primarily because it makes her sick because of the 3D effects and the motion simulator. And here we are at the lovely construction walls for Astro Orbiter. Once again, set to reopen on March 8th. So if you're coming or you're watching this after March 8th, these construction walls are down. I do try to update these tours and these walkthroughs like once every two to three months. This is the first one for 2024, so this is going to be like the big one, if you will. The longest one out of all of them. But uh, I will update it again later on in the year so that you can see, you know, what it looks like once the construction walls come down. I'm sure there'll be construction walls up somewhere else. It's just the nature of Disney. There's always construction. Walt Disney himself said that Disneyland would never be finished or never be completed. I'm sure I'm butchering the quote, but you get the gist of the idea. Uh, Disneyland is always moving forward. 
They're always building, they're always expanding, they're always coming up with the newest and greatest idea. And that's it for our time here today, going on a full tour of Disneyland. If you enjoyed this video and all the secrets that you learned, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you have questions that I did not answer, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to continue watching, <laughs> check out one of these two videos for the Disneyland Ride Guide and Disneyland Food Guide, and we will see you again next time.